Most of you guys have probably heard of manga, not to be confused with manhwa or manhwa, the Korean and Chinese counterparts. Simply put, manga are comics or graphic novels originating from Japan. Popular manga include titles such as Berserk, One Piece, One Punch Man, Kimetsu no Yaiba, and plenty of others, which can be found on my anime list or really anywhere. One quick thing to note is that manga is different from mediums such as light novels and anime. Light novels are primarily written text with minimal pictures, and anime, well, animated. Animated manga do exist, but that's a whole different topic. The more experienced of you may recognize old school manga titles such as Akira and Dragon Ball, but where did all of these start? 19th century? 18th century? Well, there's no general consensus on that, but many believe that manga originated from the 12th century in scrolls, referred to as Emakimono, in a title called Choju Jinbutsu Giga, commonly abbreviated as Choju Giga, or the scrolls of frolicking animals. Another contender for the earliest manga is Shikisan Enki, another Emakimono in roughly the same time period. Though some experts believe these scrolls fit all the criteria for being a manga, Others like Isao Takahata, the co-founder and director of Studio Ghibli, believe there is no connection between these scrolls and modern manga. Regardless, the next progress point would be seen in the late 1500s in Tale of the Monkeys, a painting and precursor to manga. Although it lacks the cinematic shots and tension with modern manga, it's an early example of speech bubbles known as fukidashi and other techniques. There's humor as it mocks samurai by depicting them as monkeys, but more importantly, there's visual progression. Some figures appear multiple times in a single illustration, and there's a dominance of visual aspects over text. Then came my man, Santo Kyoden. Well, his real name was Iwase Samuru, but became popularly known as Kyoya Denzo. And he also started with the pseudonym Kitao Masanobu. Okay, too many names, let's just call him Kyoden. In his picture book Shinji no Yukikai in 1798, we see the first use of the word manga. But they were referred to as Kibyoshi, or comic illustrated novels. In these three volume books and other manga written by artists in the late 1700s and early 1800s, we see illustrated novels commenting or making satire of aspects of contemporary society. However, these were really only read by the richer and literate urban folks. Also, manga can be political. However, the term manga became more well known in the early 1800s by the artist Katsushika Hokusai, who published the Hokusai manga. Though his idea of manga isn't particularly the same as modern day manga. These manga are more a collection of assorted sketches without much narrative or story, but at least the words stuff. Speaking of manga though, let's break down the etymology a bit. The word manga comes from manga, which has two kanji. The first is read as man, meaning whimsical or impromptu, and the second meaning pictures. Then in modern day, the man kanji can mean random, ridiculous, cartoon, involuntary, corrupt, and more. It's very similar to the Korean and Chinese counterparts, which are manhua and Manhua, respectively. Later, in 1858, Japan created its first newspapers at Yokohama, five years after it became open for international trade. One of the first newspapers was called Japan Punch by Charles Bergman and included cartoons satirizing local westerners and their difficulty in establishing a commercial and diplomatic relationship with the Japanese. Many Japanese artists and writers were influenced, concerned about Japan's rapid modernization, and began to make their own, similar publications to satirize the Japanese government. Then came Rakuten Kitazawa, who first used manga in its modern sense. With a growing market for photos and print shops in the late 1800s, a market for manga was starting to establish. Kitazawa had publications like Jiji Manga, which means tropical manga, which launched in the 1900s as a part of Jiji Shinpo, which means news of current affairs, and were modeled based on the Sunday comics of US newspapers. As the Western influence became more prevalent, Western-style satirical cartoons were beginning to influence artists in the late 19th century and early 20th century. Figures like Okamoto Ippei encouraged and accepted US cartoons in Japan, and later went on to found the manga school, encouraging manga artists to develop their own styles. By the 1930s, serialization of modern Japanese comic strips, or manga, became prevalent and had large-scale circulation in monthly magazines, even collecting into hardback volumes. However, post-World War II Japan faced many changes in structure and society. The previously militaristic and ultranationalist Japan placed many censorship bans that prohibited media that glorified war and Japanese militarism, and this media did not include manga. Two new trends started to happen. First, the explosion of artistic creativity. This period came with popular hits such as Osamu Tezuka's Mighty Adam, which is also known as Astro Boy in the United States, and Machiko Hasegawa's Sasae-san, which also became a hit at the time. Also, because Japanese people were generally poorer, 
a trend emerged starting in Osaka with Akahon, meaning red books. These are books that printed for cheap but had the long format story generally seen in manga. Akahon were commonly sold in roadside stalls, boosting its outreach as well. Osamu Tezuka, along with Sakai Shichima, also produced a ridiculously popular new treasure island known as Shin Takarajima, which rapidly sold 400,000 copies. After this period, following the 1950s and 1960s, an explosion of manga development happened. Introduction of cinematographic technique, development of shoujo styles, stylistic choices of panels, and most importantly, the audience for manga exploded. There are way too many small developments to cover in this time period, so they'll have to be saved for another time. But the main takeaways from this time period come from the 1980s and 1990s, the golden era of manga. Following Japan's economic boom, 1995 found the peak of the manga market, and that year alone, 1.34 billion manga collections were published. This time period hosted some of the biggest industry names, such as One Piece and Dragon Ball Z. Anime also found a huge development alongside manga in this time, with hit titles such as Neon Genesis Evangelion, Pokemon, Sailor Moon, Cowboy Bebop, and more. Wow, that was a lot to cover. Manga definitely has its share of history, and frankly, I would read a manga about the history of manga. There's a ton of interesting details that I just didn't have the time to add, but hopefully, this Cliff Notes presentation gave you some insight on all the small steps that build up to what we all love about manga today. Thank you for watching.